So no, both is the first time. And、uh, I remember the first concert was they changed the order, so I became last in the second concert, which happens to be at like almost midnight and half. And the first concert was six o'clock, and I just played. It's not just a normal recital, but a very intense one with two Don Giovanni variations. The first time I played this program was in June in Germany, and as soon as I start playing this, I regret it that I put this in the program. I was like, so exhausting, you know. It's I think it's more than running like 20 kilometers at night, and I realized that I have this program for the next whole season, so it's gonna be a year playing this. And so not only this, I have another. Period instrument after concert after this one, so you can imagine how it was. You know, I came on the stage, I right away,、uh, I think I did something like, can I go to sleep? And then,、um, yeah, and then I played. It's fine. <laughs> I really loved it because I think you know it's like driving a vintage car. You know, it's like driving a Ferrari 250 GT. I mean, it's just closer to what, of course, the composer we are playing, the sound that they wanted. You know, at the time, you can say that it's less perfect, you know, than the modern piano in a technical way. But I think this is the charm, exactly the charm of art. You know, it's, it's like exactly the same as when we are playing. People are criticizing, ah,、oh, it's not perfect, it's not perfect. But in the end, you know, what's perfect? You know, for me, perfection is like combining all the not perfect elements, and somehow it still works together at the end. You know, this is like I think the ultimate goal. When every detail is perfect, at the end there will be a problem. Either you lose the emotion, or you lose the spontaneity, you know. And I think it's the same with this piano, you know. It's like, of course, that's that's how it everything started. The double escapement, you know, the error, that was the, I mean, the, the invention of this piano, so we can really play the keys very fast. And that was the beginning of the development of the technique of modern piano. And Liszt, you know, particularly liked this one. Not Chopin. Chopin was more for playel. I think for the nowadays hall, that's the right choice. At the first, I was really surprised by the lightness of the keys. So there's a danger of playing very fast on the period instrument. Everything that you need to do is actually, of course, also. The more pedaling, you know, you realize that, for example,、uh, I played the Beethoven Waldstein Sonata before, and on the score it says one pedal in the third movement for like the whole three pages. And when I was young, I just didn't understand. I thought Beethoven was just idiot, you know. On the modern piano, it's just impossible because it's the harmony is messed after two bars. But I tried it in a paired instrument, and it worked perfectly, you know. So I think it's the same same for Chopin. I think even more because of the the color that can be mixed even more, you know, and less structural like the the classical pieces. Of course, the sound, everything is, I think, is more, and of course, the tone, you know, is so much lower. It's like 430 something, and I think for perfect pitch people it would be a nightmare. But、uh, for me, it's fine. I don't have it. I, I don't complain. <laughs> I think so, especially when I played the encore with Ramo. I think it was just the best moment on stage of my life. You know, it's like I really want to do all the, you know, these historical pieces like Bach, Ramo, Scarlatti.、Uh, not only Chopin, you know, of course, Liszt. But I think it really brings a, a special charm. You know, it's like listening on the vinyl. You know.、Um, Or just, just as I said, as driving a very old car, you know, it might be falling off after ten minutes, but、uh, you get this feeling of, you know, of of the history, of the authenticity as well. Did I say that? Yeah. Oh my God, what I was thinking. Um. But I mean, honestly, yes, because it's shorter, so it's less easy to make mistake. 
<laughs> I think the F minor is like 30 minutes, the E minor is 40 minutes. And uh, no, I'm kidding. So the second movement, I think, especially, is one of the best, I think, melodies Chopin ever wrote. And the middle section, you know, this operatic drama, I think it's really, I think, one of his best, I think, masterpieces, you know. E minor, I think it's just, I think at the time, was safer for me. I was more clear about uh, what I wanted to do. F minor, I was just not convinced, you know. I think I can do this today, tomorrow I can do that, you know. It changes all the time. And I think this is the same with the jury, you know, and the audience, you know, and everybody just have a different opinion on this piece. So I think that's why I didn't choose it for the competition. But for my personal feeling, you know, I think I prefer F minor, that's why. Yeah, I played in every concert basically, you know, in a recital, in a piano solo version, and the same night with period instrument with the Baroque orchestra, but not 18th century orchestra. And today as encore, you know, we did something fun with the symphony orchestra. I think so this piece is, I think, played in every possible way uh, in just a few days, you know, uh, and with one person. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I hope it doesn't get too tired of. You know, every time, especially the solo recital, because that's how I played in the competition, in the semifinal. And I just had this feeling that I really came back to October, you know, when I was playing that on stage. Uh, I was looking at the ceiling, you know, and almost got lost in the notes, but in my mind, a moment like remade, you know, suddenly I was traveling back to October. And that was quite magical. What did I play? Oh, uh, some jazz. So I don't know. It was just um, no. It's a uh, written by uh, by a jazz pianist. But I, of course, I made some little change some there. I just didn't expect to have an encore after this variation with the orchestra. So I was waiting really long backstage. It's like, oh, can we stop clapping? <laughs> and then I came on stage. I was just I think lost. I was I didn't know what to play. I think it never really happened. I always prepare a bit my encore, but today it was just a mess, you know. I think uh, it's a great way to end a festival, you know. We just drive away from the topic. So as I said, you know, the core of that program was really the Don Giovanni in town. So I had the Chopin Don Giovanni, the Liz Don Giovanni. In between, I just put in some French music. So I think it goes well with that, uh, with that program, you know, to just get away a bit from the romantic. Ravel is just really, uh, you, you get the illusion, you know, the image, the impressionism, the just get away from the, from the actual structure and notes, you know. Starting with Baroque is never a mistake, you know, especially that Rameau is something I really want to explore nowadays. It's really forgotten. And it's really some hidden gems because when we talk about Baroque, we just think about Bach and Scarlatti a lot. And when we talk about French music, everybody just says Debussy, you know, or Ravel or Fauré, whatever. And nobody really talks about Rameau, you know. I think the most virtuosic Baroque of work, you know. And he was basically the father of harmony, of you know, theory. And with Couperin also developing the piano technique, he has a whole book explaining how to fingering, you know, especially strange at the time, but these two are like, they started the, basically the keyboard technique, you know, and I don't know why it's forgotten nowadays. So, and at the same time, there is themes like Les Sauvages that everybody knows from the opera Les Anne Galant. I think it's really approachable to the audience. It's just that I think it's the same places are just played and they played and played, you know, and there's just many other things we can do. I wish I can improvise, you know, but I don't think that will be accomplished. So um, I think I would like to be a conductor so we can practice less. Oh, just uh, all the program, you know, uh, solo pieces, concerto, uh, some Rachmaninoff, some Tchaikovsky and Beethoven, just everything. Brahms concerto as well. And people ask me that, you know, it's surprising, but I have never played any Schubert yet. 
and I think I should work on it ASAP. I was always, always thought that you know, that Schubert is something like something that I should start when I'm 30 years old, you know. But I had the same concern when I was learning the Beethoven Hammer Clavier Sonata, and I, I saw the same thing. But the pandemic year, which the competition was postponed a year, so I had to learn something new to keep myself, you know, refreshed. And I learned that piece. It felt really good. It was like I think I would never learn that piece if there wasn't that, you know, period, that uh, pandemic year. So, you know, I think it's just about experience all the time and getting out of your comfort zones, you know, and try different new stuff and you never know what's gonna happen.